back from my monthly day ticket sort of session that we've been doing and uh, we're into the end of July now. Unfortunately in June when we planned to come down to do our monthly thing the uh, I had this weird complaint really, a medical complaint. I got something uh, called vertigo and uh, not something you would like actually. I, uh, I can't explain how bad it is. It was like it's an inner ear infection and uh, I can only think it was from the third Covid jab that I had because it all started after that. I was going to Croatia and uh, it's my turn to do the driving and it feels like you've lost all your balance and all control of the uh, the vehicle almost, you're kind of hanging onto the steering wheel feeling like you're going to crash and uh, so I had to curtail my long distance fishing exploits and uh, anyway here we are, it's cleared up now and uh, thank God and uh, came down, come to Bluebell Lakes which is one of our favourites and uh, we had a look around and we've come on Kingfisher, Kingfisher's easily the most beautiful of the lakes on the complex and uh, it's been fishing quite well, there's been a few fish out. Uh, it went through a lean spell apparently for a couple of three weeks and then timing's not bad. There's been uh, a 40 out and three or four thirties and uh, we're in the ballpark, I've had to wait to get a swim. Uh, got here seven o'clock this morning and you know I'm still not fishing yet and it's I think it's about two o'clock in the afternoon so I've just got in the swim, setting up, weighing it up. And you know what it's like on these busy pressured places, you're running around with a bucket trying to find a swim and uh, it's a bit awkward, but uh, it's worth the wait because you know, the rewards are there. So uh, I'm busy setting up, but you'll notice there's nothing in the swim at the moment, no rods or anything. I'm actually leaving it out on purpose. I'm taking my time and I don't want any lines in the swim. Uh, because there's, there's people either side of me close to me and I, there's fish in the area so I want them to just de-stress and move into my area so I'm in no rush I know the fish are feeding in the night and first thing in the morning so I'm setting my stall out slowly and accurately and doing everything precise so no rush just rest in the swim so uh, there's been a guy in earlier with three rods out so it seems to be the best option so we'll see how it goes anyhow and uh, hopefully I'll have something to show you next time we, uh, we do a bit, so there we go. I think I'll set the lead off for this one. <laughs> It's not a great idea tying rigs up with your lead on. Uh, I've seen a few times where it's uh, slipped out of your hands and uh, stuck a stuck. A, I mean, we're using barbless now, so but I've, I remember a particular guy that I was showing something two years ago. Uh, showing him that test that I used to do, where I was getting all different leads from one ounces to five ounces and picking them up on rigs and shaking them with my finger and shaking the shaking the rig out. Ones are easy, one and a half, twos, threes, shake it off easy, get to a four and it starts getting interesting, get to a five and it's driving it in beyond the, beyond the barb, so that's why I like heavy leads a lot of the time. Anyway, I showed it to a mate of mine in, when I had the old tackle shop in Old Stringham in Cheshire. Next thing we know he's in, he's in hospital with uh, a size four hook stuck through one of his testicles where he was trying out the uh, lifting up the different weights with the so he's got a size four hook on a rig with a four ounce lead nailed through one of his knackers. And I said, uh, how the hell did you get it in there? Surely it should have stuck in your trousers. He says, no, nah. he said I was doing, uh, I just had a bath on a Sunday night, got a, got a towel around me and he says I decided to do that test with my rig tackle box in my bedroom. I said, Jesus. He said, and the towel fell open just as I was doing the shake test and it flew off and then went, went in one of my balls. I said, Jesus, how did you go to hospital with a four ounce lead swinging? Did you wear a, did you wear a kilt? <laughs> so anyway, I've probably gone off the subject there. Right, uh, I'm going to show you a rig that I'm going to try here. Well, it's not a rig as such, it's a presentation. Uh, I use a, a slip D with a long shank 
A lot of people use dental floss to actually floss the, the bait on. I don't, I'm using that to 30 pound armour cord because I'm going to be using worms. I find that the dental floss is a bit sharp, it cuts the worms open, so I'm going to put a 16 mil boilie on first. And put that on. So you've got the Pull that onto the ring swivel, so you've got the two lengths of uh, armour cord, and then got a nice big tub of dendrobenas here, about six quid for quite a lot of worms. Just put a bit of water in them now and again to keep them moist, to keep them going. And then where you see I've got the, the two, two pieces of uh, armour cord coming out. I get a bit messy this but it's worth it. Get a worm, get a baiting needle, one of the uh, small sharp ones. Concertina the worm down on it, sticking the needle through it several times. So I've got it on the, the needle as so. Let's transfer that to the braid. It looks a bit weird this when you first see it. So I've concertinaed that down. Another one. Right on the other side. Right, you can you can stick it two worms like that if you want, which is enough sometimes. And then I just do a series of knots over the top of them. Like that. Just double over hands, bed it down onto the worm. You can see it's almost like a snowman with a, a worm on top of it. Sometimes I use up to four of these worms and I've had uh, winter 40s on them in the UK. And it's quite a nice thing to do. It's particularly interesting in the spring. Uh, just going to get me snippers and snip the tag ends off. So, that's how that looks. It's a lot more interesting than just, just the, the standard boiler that everybody seems to use. And uh, I've had a few people that were following the series that we're doing every month on different uh, sessions that we're doing. And one of them, the, the people that were commenting on it in the last YouTube uh, film said, what about the worm rig and that? Well, here we are. This is for the people that were interested in that. And uh, I'm telling you now, if you try this and give it a proper go and fish it against the same rod with just a standard boilie on, this will shine. It will really absolutely shine. The only time you get any hassle is if you've got perch in the water or, you know, a load of big bream. But even then, I've been on waters where there's nuisances. Okay, you're busier, but it takes you no time at all to recast, do another rig, put some more worms on. And even if they nip the worms off, you're still fishing. So it's definitely worth, worth a, a job. And as an, as an interesting thing, if you've got nuisances in the water that you're fishing, don't put any worm in with your spod mix or your, your free offerings. Just use this on the hook bait. And it works as a single. You don't have to fish over bait. So I tend to just have this as the little treat amongst my spod bits and it's worked brilliant. So there we go.
Buddy tree. <laughs> right, I think we have to do one of the old fashioned. Right, just, just, you probably, most of you do this anyhow, but uh, very rarely cast anything out without putting a few dissolving PVA nuggets on, just to, just to make sure I don't get any tangles and to just protect it a little bit. So I use two pieces, so I get, get the rig, just put it up against the boilie and I get another piece and I lick it and stick it like that. And sandwich, sandwich it all. So it's going nowhere. Eleven and a half there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. It's like concrete. It's like proper <laughs> bang. Not that that's always the best thing, but it'll do for now. At least then you know you're presenting. Perfectly. Mm. All this fishing on the Elsto style, what why would you want to do that on here? It's like boats are dropping it all in a tight spot all the time. I don't want it. Yeah, yeah, I want them rooted. I'm not in a match. <laughs> so I just want it around the area. It's just as a rough guy. All right, guys. Uh, nothing to report actually. I this is did the first night last night. I was really tired because I'd only had three hours sleep. Uh, set off at two o'clock in the morning from Manchester to get here for, for seven. And uh, no, no, I suppose I set off later, three o'clock, just in case. And I got here early, an hour early, so I was a bit knackered. Anyway, got the rods out. Uh, was in an area where there's fish showing, and they were showing this morning, and. Uh, but it hasn't happened, no bleeps on the rods, anything, no indications. Uh, there's been one fish caught on this bank and that was my old mate Gaz Dennis again. He's, uh, he's a bit of a character Gaz, he knows this place really well and uh, he's had a 26. So, so much feed. I think that's the only one caught on the whole lake and it's busy but uh, plenty of time yet and sometimes it's easy to think that you, you know, because I've been doing it a long time, you should be able to turn up on waters and catch straight away, but it really isn't the reality of it. Uh, I've had some mates of mine say, you know, why did you choose to go on uh, Bluebell on Kingfisher and Swan and stuff to do these things? Well, it's the sort of fishing I like, and uh, I've got no special advantages. You know, some t what, what the hell would anybody be interested in going, watching me turn up at a lake where I've pre-baited, or, you know, it's quite easy where you've got swims ropes off and all that old rubbish it's just not it's not real it's not what i want to do so i'd rather show it warts and all how, how the fishing is on these busy day ticket lakes that, that can be quite difficult you know and uh i'm not trying to make excuses it's just how it is you know you you, you might 
you could easily do a week on here and struggle to catch a fish, but to expect to do it in the first 24 hours is, is not always that feasible. But it is what it is. Uh, so I was talking earlier to the boys actually, and we were talking about uh, past experience and things that's happened on, on this lake. And uh, there was this story that might be of interest to you. Uh, I was fishing with my son quite a few years ago, and we we're on the far side on one of the points, on the middle point just setting up. And, uh, you know, it's a, quite a sort after swim. But as I said to my son, you might be in a sort after swim, but if the fish are not there, what's the point of being there? So we just got the gear together and I was looking across the lake and there was a swim on the other side that became vacant and then the one next to it and there was fish showing in front of it. So I said to my lad, right, we're packing up now. We're going to move around the other side. And he went, oh, dad, don't be stupid. He said, I've just got my bivvy up and all the rest of it. I says, mate, it, it doesn't matter. We need to go where the fish are. So my son was really pissed off and complaining. So we packed all the gear up and came round. But in the interim, a guy came up to me and he, he was, uh, he said, listen, mate, he says, can I, ask, can I ask you a few questions? And I says, yeah, of course you can. And he said, I've done 82 nights and not caught a fish on this place. And he said, my marriage has failed because I've uh, pissed my wife off. And he says, I'm on a written, final written warning at work because I've been taking loads of sickies and stuff. And he said, I've done 82 nights and not had a fish. I went, oh my God. And I says, what are you doing? So he, I says, let me have a guess. I bet you're using a three ounce lead, wide gate, size six or an eight, coated up length for the last thin strips. And I says, what bait are you using? He said, oh, I'm using uh, Nutribates, uh, pineapple and something or other and it was a bait I knew because uh, I'd got a mate who was fishing here catching quite a few fish called Chuck and he'd been doing well on the same bait so I said it's nothing to do with your bait mate I said it's it's part of your setup I said it's pretty predictable I said there's nothing wrong with the hooks or anything like that or leads normally I says but you're on pressured fish on here and it I think it's the size of your leads I said have you been getting single bleeps when you've been on fish and you know rod shakers and bits happening like that he says yeah when I've been on the fish it's been happening quite regular I says they're getting away with it and I, I think your lead size is too small and he went well what do you use I says fives and sixes he went fives and sixes he says it's only a small relatively small water I says it doesn't it's not about the distance it's about the effect when I'm fishing I want enough impact when they when they nicking themselves that the the lead drives the hooking so i explained it all to him and i says would you like a couple of my five ounce leads i'll give you three five ounce leads if you want and he went oh i'll have a couple so i left him a couple of five ounce leads i says don't change anything else just try the leads as the first step so me and my son move around this side and uh, actually i was in the swim where gaz dennis is in the night i had the uh, I had a take and I had, uh, there was only two 40 pound mirrors in here at the time and I, I'd caught one of them but I hadn't had the other one and I really wanted to catch it. I was playing it and we got the headlights on and it was the other 40. Anyway, my, my, uh, my son didn't want to get in the water with the landing net so he tried reaching out to get it and, and bumped the fish and it, it shed the hook and got off. So I was totally gutted as you can imagine. And then just as, just as that had happened and I was a bit down, one of my other rods went and I had a 37 common. So uh, that sort of made up for the, you know, the loss. Anyway, uh, that morning the guy from the other side of the lake came round and he says, Mr. Warwick, can I give you a big hug? He says, I'm so chuffed. He says, the five ounce leads have worked, so I've had a, a 38, 14 common. And he said, it's the first fish after all that time. He said, I can't believe it. And he said, I actually lost the fish on the other rod that had put the heavy lead on. And the three ounce lead, no bites on it, nothing. So uh, anyway, th that was interesting, you know, but, but he, he went on to catch fish on his eight, eight trips after that and became like, you know, made quite a name for himself because that's some consistency. And he says, mate, honestly, the, the size of leads and the change of that one detail made such a massive difference to me fishing and I says well in my experience if you use a lead that's sort of intermediate a three ounce lead it's it's not going one way or the other I'd have either like heavy leads or a super light lead of an ounce or an ounce and a half so the fish are struggling to get anything to to lock up against to to, to, to use as a 
as a fulcrum to get rid of the rig. So if you use it extra light or quite heavy, I find, doesn't matter what size water you're on, if you're struggling a bit, just try the heavy leads or a super light lead and uh, extremes at either end rather than just go for the average thing that people use. And that worked for that guy and uh, I think he ended up having a, a 4110 as well, uh, which was the new PB for him. And uh, so it's just a small analogy, but it, 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 might, it might work for your fishing if you're on a water where you, you're having a, a few problems getting them, you know. So uh, yeah, there we go. Anyway, listen, what I'll do, I'll keep you updated later, and then I'm gonna show you some of the sort of adjustments I'm gonna try and make to see if I can improve things. But I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. The bait I'm using, I've been catching loads of fish on recently, on other waters, and uh, you know, I, I put in some sweet corn and some pellet as well with the uh, 12 mil boilies and uh, I can't see, I've had fish over me, so it's just a question. Sometimes you've just got to wait for them to trip up. The next question I've got to answer then is, do we, do we refresh things or just leave them in situ, ready, waiting for when, because on these pressured waters, I think fish are shy of a new patch of bait that goes in because you, you can imagine the sea in baited areas all the time. You don't know what bait you're fishing over from the previous occupant of the swim. That's, that's one problem. And I know that these fish like bait that's been in there where they've been clocking it continually for quite a while. Uh, so uh, it's, the bait I've got is a new bait for this, this venue, but uh, I think it will work because uh, I, I did use it well, 10 years ago, the same, the same bait, and I caught well on it uh, over the road on, on Swan. So uh, I'll keep you posted now, see how it goes. We were just having a bit of a, uh, a reminisce, actually, about the Bluebell complex of the day, and. Uh, I first fished Kingfisher, I think it was about 1995, and I just came and did a 24-hour session in winter. It was a thick pea suit fog, and I couldn't even see where I was casting, actually, so I just fanned three rods out with singles on, and I had a 23-pounder out of the blue, and I didn't even know where I'd cast because the fog, the fog was that thick, and it, you very rarely catch fishing fog, I've found, but I've had a few over the years, and uh, that was my first experience of Bluebell Lakes and Kingfisher. And for some reason, I always meant to come back because I really enjoyed it, but I just never got round to it because it's a 300 mile round trip to my house and back uh, from my house to here. Anyway, I was talking about the second time I ever came to Kingfisher. I remember Tony Bridgefoot, my mate who, who, who owns the complex, he, he, I went in the uh, calf to, to get the ticket and he says, all right, boy, he says, I bet you've come for Blue, uh, to, for, for uh, Benson, haven't you? And I says, oh, I'd love to catch it, mate, yeah, but I was looking at these photos on the wall and I said, that plated big mirror there is just awesome. I said, I'd rather catch that because I like mirrors, you know, because of the, the randomness of them. And uh, he says, you'd rather have that than Benson. He says, it doesn't come out much that, yeah, it hardly ever gets caught. He says, perhaps once every couple of three years it comes out. I says, really, as little as that? He says, yeah. So I had my lad with me, our guy, and he was only a small kid. So we're walking round and I ended up seeing an old mate of mine, Rich Wilby, who, who used to work for the Angling Times. And he'd been on that first point for a couple of days and he'd, he'd got quite a few fish showing in front of him. And I said, have you had out, Rich? And he said, uh, I can't believe it. I've not, not had a bite. And I said, Jesus. He says, I'm packing up shortly. He says, do you want to move in here? I says, absolutely. So me and Guy were rubbing our hands waiting to get in. And Rich had been using maize on his rigs. Uh, and he, he, he thought that would be the answer to it. You know, but I want to use boilies. I've always, well, I've learned since that this, this particular water is a real good boily water, you know, even more than particle. I've always preferred boilies on here. So our approach was to use uh, 18 mil boilies. And we were using a, a fish mill. I was with old dynamite baits at the time and uh, I'd done a tuna bait that was working well on other waters. So I thought, right, we'll use that. And 
I got in and for some reason I used to do everything in fives. So I put the, I did three rods, uh, sorry, four rods up, two for my lad and two for me. We, we decided to double up and we did uh, five pouchfuls of 18 millers over the top of each cast that we did. We had 18 mil, mil bottom baits, a uh, big mesh PVA bag with five full boilies in, five halves that were five boilies chopped in half and five that was crushed up. Uh, for some reason, I just liked doing that. It seemed right. So we put them in. Uh, at one o'clock in the morning, I've got a screaming take. Hit this fish and it was right old scrap off it. And uh, our guy netted it and I says, mate, look at that, what it was. It was only the, uh, the big plated one, the scaly one. And it was 40 pound nine. So it was ironic, you know, we, when you when you look in, it's in, isn't it? And I was looking at that fish thinking, yeah, that's the one I wanted. And there it was on my first ever proper session on here in warm weather, you know. So uh, it's got a lot of happy memories for me, this place. So that's why I keep coming back. Not so many times over the year, but I always like to keep coming in. And all the lads are mega, you know, we've, we've had such a great time on this, this trip. It's been uh, magnificent. It's not always about catching fish. It's sometimes about the company and uh, a lot of good old boys on here, so uh, I do love it. And if you've never been, you really should come and try it and uh, soak up the atmosphere. And the fish in here are second to none, you know, there's some mega, mega. Fish. Well, good morning. Uh, this is the second morning, and unfortunately, it's not happened. I've uh, I've gone down at the wheel, so to speak, and you never know that you've done anything wrong until it's not worked out. And uh, unfortunately, it's just not happened. And I've not seen any fish over me today. I seen one roll over my baited area yesterday. And I didn't know whether to put any more bait in because I'd not caught the first night or whether to just sit on my hands. So what I did, I, I refreshed all three rods with, uh, you know, check the rigs were okay and the hooks hadn't dulled off. Uh, like they can do, you know, you can... I mean, I didn't sharpen the hooks I'm using, which is unusual for me, but they were, they were, they were barbless and they're super sharp anyhow, so I thought they are good enough. But I didn't have any action and... Uh, my old mate Gaz, Gaz Dennis, uh, fishing near me, he's the, the, the complex sort of guru, really. And uh, I've mentioned him before, he's, he's awesome. Uh, he's had a, a good few fish next to me. And uh, it's a bit, of a bit of an head scratching job, but he, he knows his place well. He knows, he's got an established bait. You know, he's fished here for a long time. And uh, got to take me out to the guy. He's, he's done great and uh, he's going home. I was only supposed to be doing 48 hours and I can't, I can't leave it on a, on, a, on a bit of a bummer like this. So he's going and you know what it's like on these busy day ticket waters. You, you kind of think, I might as well seize the opportunity. So I've talked the missus into it. Uh, Ben's got to go so we won't be able to continue the film but uh, another mate of mine's over here, Paul, and he says he'll do it if I catch anything, he'll film it. So we have got a, a plan B, so to speak. So that's what I'm going to do. And uh, so I'm going to move in there and hopefully I'll be able to retrieve the situation. And, uh, you know, because on these waters like this, it's obvious that there's a spot there that's, that's working. Uh, Gaz is super precise about it. And uh, why not? It's sort of, why not look a gift horse in the face? I'm going to, I'm going to go for it. So. Uh, that's the reality of these busy big fish day ticket waters, you know, you've got to, you've got to put the effort in and you got we haven't got enough time really to do it. So as I say, it's 48 hours and you think, oh that's enough time to do it, but you know, I'm just the same as everyone else. You've got three up baits out there. 
you've got to make your choices and your decisions and you know see what happens and uh, as I say I'll make the effort do the extra night and hope it pays off so uh, I'll get back to you on that one anyhow all the best till next time